Hi, I'm Dave Schatz with DHS Equipment. Today we're going to go over a couple of test procedures on the Wacker PT3 trash pump. Um, then we're going to go ahead and do an overhaul on the pump end with an overhaul kit that we put together here at DHS Equipment. Um, we're going to go ahead and take the pump outside. We're going to prime it or fill it with water. We're going to do a suction test. The suction test is going to be done with the use of a, a vacuum gauge. The vacuum gauge is measured in inches of mercury. One inch of mercury on the gauge is equal to one foot of suction left. Uh, so we're going to do the, the suction gauge, uh, the suction test. <clears throat> then we're going to do a discharge pressure test. The discharge pressure test uh, is measured in PSI. One PSI is equal to 2.3 foot of delivery height. That's if we're, if we're discharging the water straight up, that's what delivery height is. So one PSI is equal to 2.3 feet of delivery height. This particular pump is, has a spec of 95 feet. So 95 feet at 2.3 feet per inch, we should be measuring about 41 PSI when we do our test. Okay, so we're gonna head outside, we're gonna do the test, then we're gonna come inside and we'll explain what the results of that test mean, and we'll proceed from there. So we tested the pump outside and the results were not so great. Uh, on the suction side, we were only getting about 18 inches of mercury on the gauge, which means we're only going to get about 18 foot of suction lift. This pump has a spec of about 25. So not that great. We need to, to see what's going to affect suction on this pump. Um, <clears throat> if you're out on the job site, uh, you could, you could uh, possibly have problems with the strainer being clogged, you could have a hole or damage on your suction hose, you could have a, a damaged gasket or a missing gasket when you hook it up to the pump. Uh, so anytime you're going to test a pump, it should be the pump itself, not a uh, job site condition. Um, so when we go to the pump itself and we look for suction problems, we're going to look at uh, engine RPM, uh, it should be about 3600. Uh, the other thing that's going to affect suction is the water level. When you go to test it, uh, the pump needs to be full of water. The other thing uh, that's going to affect suction on the pump uh, are air leaks. So we get air leaks on the flapper valve uh, where the, the port gets mounted to the housing. We get an air leak up on the, the fill port. You can have an air leak on the drain port. You can have an air leak on the, the main pump housing gasket. If you're sucking air, you're not going to have very good suction. Um, so those are a couple of things that we're going to look for uh, for suction pro uh, problems. Uh, if we find that our O-rings are good, our RPM are good, <clears throat> if we find out the water level is good and we still have poor suction, then we have to look at worn components. Uh, the two biggest things that are going to wear on, inside of a pump is going to be the impeller and the volute or the volute insert if it's got an insert. Um, 
The other thing that we're going to look for is the, the results of the discharge test. The discharge pressure test was 30, or approximately 30. Um, at 2.3 feet per, per PSI, that only gives us about 69 out of the 95 uh, foot of delivery height that this uh, pump is capable of. So what are the things that are going to give us a, a, uh, a discharge problem? Engine RPM again, if our engine RPM is good, uh, we can scratch that off the list. And then the other thing that's going to give us a delivery issue or a pressure issue uh, are the, the two same components that give us suction problems. Either the insert on the volute and the impeller. Now as the impeller gets worn and as the uh, insert gets worn, it creates a gap between the two and the larger the gap, the less performance this pump is going to give you. So in most cases, if, if your, uh, your RPM is right, your water is uh, at the right level, there's no uh, obstructions uh, on the intake side or the output side of the pump, uh, we generally have to look at worn components. Uh, again, the two main worn uh, components we look at, the impeller and the insert. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at this right now, and we'll look at the impeller, we'll look at the insert, and we'll see what we find. <clears throat> okay. For the purpose of this test and the video, uh, what we did is we actually removed the shims and we removed the insert before we did the test. Um, this would pretty much simulate a worn impeller and a worn insert, uh, insert in the volute. Um, the shims, uh, Wacker offers shims anywhere from a quarter millimeter up to about one millimeter, uh, but the insert itself is about three sixteenths of an inch. So when we remove this uh, and we, we put this cover back on, we got, the, we got the test results that we had. We had low suction and low discharge pressure. And that is ultimately because we removed this insert. Again, that just simulates a worn impeller and a worn, uh, worn insert. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and do a pump overhaul right now. We're going to go ahead and inspect everything. We're going to rebuild everything. We're going to retest the pump. And we're going to show you how to shim the uh, insert and how to determine how many shims get put onto the uh, behind the insert and not. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and start with removing the impeller and the mechanical seal and the gaskets on the pump side, and then we'll come over here and deal with the balloon side. Okay, uh, to start with, uh, I'm going to remove this import uh, intake housing. Uh, because we're going to replace the, pl the flapper. The flapper is part of the overhaul kit that we have. Uh, and I'm also going to remove it just to make it easier to see what's going on elsewhere. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to remove the impeller. <clears throat> the impeller can be removed a couple of different ways. The impeller, the impeller has a cast in bolt head. This way you could put, I believe, a 19 millimeter socket on it, um, hit it with your impact, uh, turn it counterclockwise, that'll remove the impeller. Uh, the only problem is if your impeller is worn, uh, the same abrasiveness, the same junk that you've been pumping that wears the impeller and wears the insert uh, has probably worn this off a little bit and your corners are probably rounded and you may wind up putting a socket on there and just rounding it off. So it's possible it'll work but not 100%. The other way is with this impeller removal tool, part number 1589381. Uh, we have this on our website. It's a very useful tool. Now, the thing about this impeller tool, it's good for the 2-inch and the 3-inch uh, trash pumps, but the new style only. Uh, this is the version where the, the impeller threads on to the shaft. The older style PT2, PT3 pumps slid onto a keyed shaft and were held in with either a castle nut or, or a bolt or something like that. 
Uh, so this will not work on the old style pump. It will only work on the version where the impellers are threaded on. So we're going to go ahead and remove the impeller now with our impact. It just fits right there on the, on the outside vein of the impeller. Take a look at that. Okay, so we'll finish removing the impeller by hand. And now we're left with the mechanical seal. We're going to just pull off this half, the mechanical seal. This is the half that, that mates with the part that's pressed in. <clears throat> this has a little rubber boot that slides over the shaft and this goes behind the impeller. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to remove the mechanical seal. The mechanical seal is pressed in and is held in place with just an O-ring. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and pry that out of there. It's not too bad. I'm going to try to do it so where you can see it uh, on the video. You see it's just got an o-ring all the way around it and it's that o-ring that squeezes into place and, and keeps it in place so that's how you remove the uh, mechanical seal <clears throat> the last thing in here um, is is a wear plate this plate right here <clears throat> it's not part of the overhaul kit but is it, it is an option um, what this plate is designed to do is just uh, protect the pump housing. If this wasn't here, you've just got the, the pump housing right back there. Um, right now, if this plate gets worn, it's replaceable. It's about 30 bucks or so. Um, if this wasn't here, if this steel plate wasn't here, once this housing starts to get worn, you've got to replace the whole housing. This housing is very expensive. So they put this metal plate to protect the housing. So you may or may not need it. You'll have to take a look at the condition of yours. Uh, it is an option when you buy the overhaul kit. It's not needed unless yours is already worn. Okay, uh, so the other thing in here uh, is the back O-ring. I'm going to remove this O-ring. And part of the kit, <clears throat> you see we got the four bolts that hold this housing to the engine. Behind every one of those bolts is a copper seal ring. Just a little copper uh, seal ring. And what that's going to do, that's going to seal, uh, seal the back of that bolt and it's going to seal the pump housing from the engine. Uh, if this seal gets damaged or this seal starts to get worn or if a bolt gets loose and all of a sudden this starts shaking around and getting worn, uh, you could suck air from the back housing, uh, the back of the, of the pump. So part of this kit are four seal rings for these bolts. Um, if you don't, you don't need to remove the complete housing from the engine to do this, I would just remove one bolt at a time, replace the seal ring, put some uh, medium strength thread lock on there, and these get torqued down to 14 foot pounds. So I would just remove one, replace the ring, then do the other one just in a crisscross pattern. Again, blue light tight, uh, 14 foot pounds, one bolt at a time, and that will seal the back of the pump. The next thing we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and install a new mechanical seal. Okay, so now we're going to install the mechanical seal. Uh, again, because the mechanical seal presses in, uh, it's got that little O-ring. Sometimes it's a little bit easier if you put a little bit of grease right around the O-ring. That's what we're going to do. We're going to put a little bit of grease on the O-ring. <coughs> and we're going to press it in. Now before you press it in, just take a look at the mechanical seal. The back side of the mechanical seal has a couple of grooves in it that the grooves go towards the engine. The portion of the mechanical seal that we need pointing out is the, is the flat smooth side. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and press that in. Once that's in, 
we need to make sure it's clean. If there's any debris, any sand, anything at all trapped between the two mating seals of that seal, uh, we're going to damage it almost immediately. So once it's in, take a rag or take whatever and just knock off whatever you can. And then once you knock off any debris, come behind it with denatured alcohol, a little carb cleaner, a little brake cleaner, whatever, you, whatever you've got, just a little bit of pressurized solvent just to make sure there's nothing stuck onto that mechanical seal. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to put the other half of the mechanical seal on. <clears throat> uh, the side right here with the mating surface is, is the other part of the seal. Uh, this rubbery part is towards the impeller. Um, it's, a, it's a little bit of a snug fit and we've got some uh, the metal threads over here and this rubber boot. We don't want to do any damage to it. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a little more grease right in here so it slides past that a little bit easier. Just a little bit. Okay, get our spray, make sure there's nothing on that seal, and we're going to slide it right over the shaft. Okay, I'll just clean off the extra grease. Okay, next thing we're going to do is we're going to put our impeller on. Before you put the impeller on, um, for safety purposes, you need to either turn the engine switch into the off position or take your spark plug boot off. You don't want this engine to start while you're doing this. When you remove it, you're going opposite. You're un un unscrewing this from the shaft. But now that we're screwing it onto the shaft, once you bottom out uh, and you could possibly turn the engine, you don't want this engine to possibly start while this impeller's in your hand. So pull the spark plug boot, turn the switch off, make sure the engine is not capable of running when you're going to install this impeller. So we're going to go ahead and install the impeller right now by threading it back onto the shaft. Okay, see that? That could potentially start an engine. So make sure your engine has been disabled. Engine switch off or spark plug boot pulled. Now that the impeller is in place, our four seal rings have been replaced. We're going to go ahead and put the new O-ring back here. This is one of the several O-rings that come in the kit. There's a little lip that it sits right on. So that O-ring is in place, part of the kit <clears throat> is a new O-ring for your fill cap, it just pops right off the cap, place it with a new one. These O-rings are very important. If this O-ring is damaged or nicked or missing, you're going to suck air from right around here and you won't achieve suction on your pump. Discharge plug. Same thing, we'll remove this O-ring. that one. Okay. On the job site you're constantly filling this pump and you're constantly draining the pump to clean it. Uh, it's very possible you could do damage to these more so than you can with the internal ones. I would never get rid of these. These are always good to have the spares. I would just simply put them right here and let them hang out there. You've always got one uh, in case of an emergency. Okay, so <clears throat> now that that's done, we're, we're down to the flapper. The flapper valve 
uh, does not stop you from pumping water. It does not stop the pump from sucking water up. The flapper valve, the main reason we've got the flapper valve, uh, it maintains the water. So you, that's when somebody refers to it as a self-priming pump, it doesn't self-prime. It'll maintain the prime. You still need to fill the pump one time at least to get the water in there. What this does, this, this allows the water to not come back out. So it'll allow the water in, but it'll stop right here and it won't allow the water to come out. So this flapper valve prevents the water coming out. So the next time you need the pump, so long as you've got water in here, it'll start again. Without this, you'll lose water and then you won't be able to prime it until you fill it again. So that is the purpose of the flapper valve. Um, when we put this in, we're gonna do the same thing <clears throat> as we did with the seal rings. We're gonna do one corner at a time because if you tighten this corner too much, you're gonna squeeze this and you may create an air gap between here and once again, if you're sucking air around the gasket, you're not going to pump water. You're not going to suck water. The little rigid part, the little, well, the little ridges go on the inside. And you can see on the back of the port, it's got the little slot over here. And it has the little slot, uh, the little piece that fills the slot. So you know which direction you're going to be putting it on. And then we've got our four bolts. Again, we're going to go ahead and use a medium strength Loctite, which is like a blue Loctite. We're going to do a crisscross pattern and snug these up. This is going to get torqued to 18 foot-pounds. Okay, now this is bolted on for the most part. Uh, th this part of the pump is done. Now we're going to go move on to the front cover and volute section and deal with the inserts and the, uh, and the shims. Okay, now we're going to address the, the pump cover, the volute, the insert, and the shims. The pump overhaul kit that we have uh, is going to include all the O-rings. It's going to include a set of four shims. It's going to include a new insert with the, with the new nuts on the back, the, they're lock nuts with nylon inserts. It's going to include these three screws and the seal rings that are behind these three screws. These screws are what hold the volute on. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and start. We're gonna take the volute off and we're going to replace those bolts and seal rings. Uh, we're going to uh, put the new insert and the shims and we're gonna explain a little bit more about the shims. So let's start by removing the volute. In order to get this last screw out, you're going to have to remove one of these screws and slide that handle out of the way, otherwise that bolt won't come out all the way. It will release the volute, but you won't be able to replace that seal ring until you remove that, that one bolt and slide the handle out. So for our purposes, we're just going to go ahead and leave it dangled there for now. You'll get three of these bolts and three of these seal rings as part of the kit. Okay. Move this. This is where one of the O rings are. Now, here is the volute itself. The volute itself. <coughs> gets the volute insert. This volute insert is what we remove to simulate a worn insert and a worn impeller, which is why we have the low suction and low discharge pressure. Uh, typically when you get this pump and it's new, you've got a couple of really thin shims uh, behind it. And it just goes right in there, it just drops right in. And it has three lock nuts, three lock nuts that hold it in place on the back. Okay. Uh, so anyway, without that insert, that's when we had that poor suction, poor discharge. And what, what you would normally do, if we weren't doing the complete overhaul, uh, but we still had those, uh, those low figures, uh, what we would do is we would shim the insert only. Even if we didn't have any shims and we just had the insert, that insert is 3 16th of an inch. So that's going to bring that uh, tolerance a lot closer 
than it was before. So you're still going to get far better pressure and suction even if you didn't have shims. But we're going to go ahead and put some shims in. And the number of question is, how many shims do I put in? How do I know when I've got too many or not enough? Well, Wacker doesn't have a way to test that other than putting the shims in, putting the volute back onto the cover, and installing it back onto the pump and seeing if you're able to rotate that engine or not. So uh, it's a little bit of trial and error, uh, but that's what we're gonna go ahead and do. So what we're gonna do is put our shims, we have new shims that we've got. Uh, we're gonna put our shims in. We're just gonna line those up with the bolt holes. We're gonna drop our insert back in. Because this is trial and error, we're not going to use the new lock nuts yet. Because the lock nuts have a nylon insert, and you should only use that once. So for trial and error purposes, we're going to use the old lock nuts until we get the right distance in, the right amount of shims. And then once we have that right, we're going to take it off one last time, put the appropriate lock nuts on, and put the appropriate torque on. Okay, now that the insert is in, <coughs> I'm going to go ahead and put the put this back onto the cover. Put our bolts back in and put it on the pump, and we're going to see if we need more shims or have too many shims or what the story is. So this is back in place. We've got uh, we've got a couple of shims in there. Um, you may not need too many, considering it's going to be a new impeller and a new insert. But we're just going to show you what to what to look for and how to know if you've got too many or not enough. So put the cover back on. Snug this up, make sure it's on there. Go to full start the engine slowly. Jam tight. We have too many shims. So now we're going to go ahead and pull one or two shims out. It's a little bit of a pain, but it doesn't take too much longer. In this particular case, I'm going to take out the thickest shim, only because the impeller is new, the insert is new, I don't need that much, uh, that much more shimming, so I'm just going to leave these real thin ones in uh, and see how that goes. <coughs> Whatever shims you have left may come in handy later few months down the road you notice a little performance drop uh, and you take a pressure reading and you're a little bit off you know more than likely you could just go right to this section put a couple of shims in close that tolerance between the impeller and the, and the insert and that should probably help you a little bit we'll go ahead and put this on again
able to pull the engine freely. We removed the one shim. That one shim seems to be the difference, so we're going to leave it the way it is. So we're going to leave the shims in here. Uh, and if we take a look, I don't know how well you can take a look in there. Uh, it turns out this insert right now uh, is about flush with this housing. Before, with the one millimeter extra, you could feel that this was above, above here. And I guess that was just enough to make that engine bind. So essentially the impeller was pressing against here. So uh, too tight, too much of a tolerance, the thing is bound up. So we backed it off one millimeter. This is now sitting flush, uh, and this is what we're gonna go with. So we're gonna go ahead and pull these lock nuts out. Okay, we'll set these to the side. And we'll use the new ones. The new ones have the, the nylon insert, so on a lock nut with a nylon insert, you really only want to torque those down once. You don't want to keep reusing those. Okay, these three lock nuts are part of the kit. Doesn't take much to tighten these. These are a little uh, these little nuts get torqued down to about seven foot pounds. You don't need any thread lock because it's already a lock nut. Um, so this is ready. We've got the new O-ring. Get rid of that O-ring. So we've got the new O-ring that's going to go in here. <coughs> Let me go ahead and set this up. Let's put the O-ring right here. Okay, this is where you're going to use your new bolts or your new seal rings. You're going to put them right in. And if you're replacing it all, you're going to have to remove one bolt, slide this out of the way to get that last bolt out uh, so you can replace that bolt with seal ring. We replace these bolts just because they, they tend to get uh, a little damaged whether dirt, rocks, debris, whatever. So once you do this once or twice, you'll start to round them out or they'll just get kind of cruddy. So for, for that purpose, we include these three bolts in the kit. put these on you're going to put a little bit of a medium strength uh, thread locker uh, these get torqued down to 18 foot pounds and then the last thing we're going to do I'm going to replace these o-rings again o-rings once you take these off you may notice this is a fairly new pump um, but on a pump that's been around a little while you'll notice they start to take the uh, <coughs> take the shape of uh, between the, the pump and the, the, the bevel of the housing and they kind of look triangular or flat. Uh, at that point when they maintain that shape and they don't bounce back to a round O-ring, uh, you tend to start to get air leaks in there. So that's why we've got all the replacement O-rings with that kit as well. Okay, so the last O-ring is on here. Uh, that's that's pretty much it. We've got the we've got the new insert. The insert is shimmed. We've got the new O-ring behind the volute. We've got the two new uh, O-rings for the pump housing cover. Um, that's it. Everything on here on the pump end is new. The O-rings, the seal rings, uh, the flapper valve. I think we're ready to put this together and go test it. Okay, next thing we're going to do, we're going to take this outside, we're going to test it, we're going to see uh, what our new readings are on our vacuum gauge, the new readings on the pressure gauge, and, and let's see what the difference actually is uh, now that we put essentially a new appeller and a new insert um, compared to before 
where we had taken out the insert to, uh, uh, to simulate a, a worn insert and a worn impeller. So we'll see the vacuum difference, we'll see the pressure difference, and you'll see the, the, the one component that really had so much to do with the performance of this pump. Okay, so let's go test this outside right now. see uh, our pressure went up from about 18 to 27. Uh, our discharge pressure went from approximately 30 to about 40. Uh, it, it's a little hard to detect exactly. The gauge shakes a little bit um, and also we lose a little bit of water on the intake side when we're doing the discharge pressure side but uh, we, we were pretty close to 40, 27 on the vacuum. Uh, this pump is performing very well and other than the O-rings that we did, just for the sake of showing you uh, what the overhaul kit does and brings, uh, none of that was actually necessary. The, the problem itself that we put into it, uh, again, was to simulate a worn impeller and a worn uh, insert. Uh, essentially, uh, those two components have everything to do with the performance of this pump. Uh, in the future, if, you're, if your vacuum is a little bit low and your pressure's not right, you know now you could look for air leaks, you could look for level of water, things like that. If your vacuum is great but your discharge pressure is low, you know exactly what to look for. If you've got a discharge problem uh, and the pressure is low, you know that has everything to do with the gap between the impeller and the insert. Uh, this overhaul kit comes with plenty of, plenty of shims. Um, as you can see, it doesn't take very much before the, before the impeller gets bound up against the insert. Um, which tells you you have too many shims in there, but you're going to have leftover shims. So down the road, the discharge pressure is a little bit low. Uh, you could just go back and, and shim it the same way we just did it now, and you could increase that pressure. Uh, if, if for some reason you've got, uh, you do this overhaul kit, and your suction and pressure is still not uh, where it should be, then we need to look a little bit further. We possibly have a problem with your volute or something along those lines, but that, they're, they're very rare. The volutes don't get worn so often. The main wear component is that insert. Um, and, and that's about it. Uh, if you've got any questions, you can certainly give us a call. Our toll-free number is 866-611-9369. Again, we can be found online at dhsequipmentparts.com. And I hope this, uh, hope this video was helpful for you. Thanks for watching.